we started looking at the biomechanics of balance because uh, essentially you have your human body which is a multi segmented um, collection and you know connected by movable joints. So, the stabilization occurs because of the muscles. So, even when we are just standing still there is muscle activity. So, your center of mass is not moving anywhere. So, even though you are theoretically doing no work your muscles are constantly adjusting you know because you have all these joints and it is ensuring that your CG falls within the base of support. So, that you maintain balance. So, this muscle activity and as you can see your base of support in the A p direction is typically much smaller than what you have in the M l direction because that I also have control over how I can how I spread my feet to some extent. Okay, but in the A p direction especially it is very critical and a lot of the major motions also are happen in the sagittal plane the flexion extension at the joints. So, maintaining that balance is very uh, crucial uh, at ensuring that the C g stays within this base of support especially in the A p direction is a very crucial uh, uh, task for the body to perform. So, if you look at it and if you look at say balancing on hands that is even more of a difficult task. So, if you look at if you are normally standing this is normal standing this is a hand stand ok basically somebody standing with their hands as the base of support. So, very difficult tasks to perform for two reasons one in normal standing if you look at it your calf muscles are uh, pretty strong you know they have a large cross sectional area. So, if you look at the um, the soleus and the gastroc muscles which are your ankle plantar flexors because that has to prevent the body from falling you know uh, moving about the ankle joint. So, if you look at the ankle extensors right then the average cross section the cross sectional area is about calf muscles is about 130 centimeter square ok and you have a 5 centimeter lever arm about the ankle. These are capable of producing a maximum force of about 30 to 50 Newtons. So, the maximum moment that can be applied about the ankle to counteract the effect of gravity is basically 30 to 50 into 5 which is 16 to 50 Newton centimeters which is a pretty high moment 162.5 Newton meters ok. It is a pretty large moment that can be applied about that ankle by the calf muscles in order to counteract any imbalance. On the other hand in the hand stand your wrist flexors are the ones the area is cross sectional area is about 20 centimeter square. So, which can lead it leads to a maximum force production of about say 500 Newton and the moment arm that you have about your wrist that joint this is also reduced to about 2 centimeters. So, the maximum moment that can be produced 
is a thousand Newton centimeter. So, when we are standing normally, there is quite a bit of leeway that we have for shifting. We, we tend to shift forward and backwards and you can still maintain your balance. If you are doing, um, that is why if you do yoga, if you do a shirasasana, you, you, you basically lock your arms like this, that is your base of support. When you put your head down, you lock your arms like this and then, because that then becomes your base of support. So, you have a little more leeway. Whereas, if you do a handstand like a gymnast, where this is all it is, okay, then you have very little scope for not losing your balance. And your arm muscles also have to be extremely strong to be able to, because uh, uh, you have, you, you can apply only a much smaller moment to stabilize yourself. So, you can lose balance that much more easily if you are doing a handstand, okay, as opposed to when we stand uh, normally. You may have seen in some um, if you, um, does anybody here know karate or taekwondo or anything like that? You are, you are aware of the stance that they take, right. When they get into the fighting stance, they usually they have their legs spread out in the fore aft direction, in your AP direction. The reason for that is it is much harder for somebody to push you and make you lose your balance than if you are standing straight like this. So, you have one leg forward, the other leg backward and then you lower your CG also. It is always with, a knee, with your knees bent that you, th that is your stance, fighting stance as they call it, right. And that is basically so that you have a better chance of having, keeping your balance when you are in this, uh, uh, when, when you have to fight. Let us look at this case, where I have a, a, and even in the frontal plane, when you see them stand, their stance is more like this. They actually spread their feet out and then sit. The sitting is to lower the center of gravity and the wider stance gives you uh, the better, uh, the larger base of support. So, if you look at, let us look at this case, where I have say, the CG located. So, let us let us say through what angle. So, the question we want to answer is say a person is just standing and here you have a weight lifter. Through what angle can you displace the person before balance is lost in the frontal plane. Okay. So, here actually I just realized that this diagram is not accurate. So, this ignore this arrow, balance will be lost when the line through the C G, when the line through the C G just crosses the edge of the foot. Okay. So, when the line through the C G just crosses the edge of the foot. So, if that is W. So, when you are first standing and let us say this is this distance is 0.5 meters. The C G is located initially at 0.8 meters. Now, if somebody gives the person a push okay, and they are now, the C G is falling towards the edge, then what is the angle? What does this angle have to be for this to happen? So, I am interested in finding this angle theta. Okay. So, that is fairly straightforward. I have this distance is, so if I look at sin theta, sin theta is nothing but this distance is 0.25 by the hypotenuse of this is 0.25 square plus 0.8 square. 
this is actually from end to end this point 5. So, theta then is about 17.4 degrees in this case. Now, what happens? So, if you look at this weight lifter who has a load of a total load of say 75 kgs on either side okay. and the person is say mass of the person is 80 kgs. You have and say this is lifted to a height of 2.4 meter and initially just the body if the person's COM is at a distance of 1 meter. Okay. I can find the combined COM combined let us say is somewhere here now when the person lifts this weight right. How can I find that? I can just take moments about the horizontal line. So, I have 80 into 1 plus 150 into 2.4 right equals the total 80 plus 150 into y c o m of this system. Okay. So, I get y c o m as 1.91 meters. So, now the center of mass for this pers for this weight lifter has moved from 1 meter above the ground to 1.91 meters when they are holding it like that. So, now how much leeway do they have to maintain balance? So, if I look at the same kind of thing, if the person in the frontal plane you know shifts a little bit like that, okay, what would be the angle at which balance is lost? And let us say this time when they are standing straight like this, the distance between the feet is 0.3 meters, they are not using a wide stance. Now, your sin theta is for this case 0.15 divided by square root of 0.15 square plus 1.91 square, you get a theta of 4.5 degrees. You have much smaller leeway for something to go wrong and lose your balance. Okay. So, a wider stance like I said in you know when somebody stands with their knees bent and a wide stance then you cannot displace them that easily, you cannot make them fall that easily, lose balance that easily, because you would have to push them through a larger angle for the line from the COM to pass through the edge of the foot. Okay. But it is very easy to lose balance if you are uh, and if you are carrying a high load like that above your head, because if as your center of mass goes up, right you have less ability to recover from losing your balance. So, in the frontal plane it is critical that to maintain balance you keep your C g low and a wider base for standing. You do the same thing like I said if you expect. So, uh, like if you expect the opponent to attack you in the sagittal plane try to displace your balance in the sagittal plane in the anterior posterior direction then you widen your stance in that plane. Okay, so, you put one leg in front of the other and you widen that stance. So, that then you have 
you can uh, you have more time to sort of recover your balance or do something to you are less likely to lose your balance easily when you do that. Okay. So, when you carry a load what happens? Oops. So, you are carrying a load what is and so the weight lifter itself right you have the person having to lift the load bend and lift the load ok at what how much load can you lift before you again could lose your balance ok. So, if you look at say the mass of the legs is here this should actually be here you have the mass of the legs say this is your ankle joint the, the pivot about which we are looking at you have the weight of the upper body so you have uh, m upper body g acting here m legs g acting here and this is your m load times g okay so let's say this distance is a this distance is b and this base of support that you have is c. So, your foot you have that much in front of the ankle joint c. So, we want to calculate the maximum load that can be held before you topple forward. Is it just in the diagram that the mass of the upper body is passing through the ankle joint? Yeah, in this case it is taken that way. It is not actually. It is not necessarily the case it is not necessarily the case. So, uh, C is the distance from the so, right now here it is assumed to pass through the ankle. So, C is essentially you are looking at the body toppling you know moving about the ankle joint ok. So, in this case because we want to get rid of that moment we are saying that ok the person is standing such that because that is a significant portion and you are saying that ok I am assuming that the weight passes through the ankle joint. So, if you look at for instance ballet dancers when they stand on tiptoe right we talked about balance when you are standing and the hand stand when they stand on tiptoe they plantar flex their ankle to such an extent that the ankle joint is in line with the toe. So, that you are eliminating that one joint about which you can lose the balance. Right. So, when they stand you know they stand on pointy toes if you look at their foot in fact many of them their foot becomes like that like because of sustained practice they are uh, they will stand on this toe and they, they plantar flex it to the extent that the reaction actually passes through the ankle. So, that they can maintain so that they are eliminating that moment about the ankle. No, for this particular it is not necessarily the case. So, then you would know the distance about which that uh, see essentially you are calculating the net of these forces it is not necessarily the case. Here you are just 
for simplicity I am just eliminating the moment due to that force moving back such that the weight of my upper body passes through the ankle ok. But it is not always the case I, I could be inclined at some other angle and that is again going to affect how much load I can carry. So, if I bend and lift you know a certain load and hold it versus if I straighten up more and hold it you know that is going to make a difference on how much load I can carry because of this because of the effect of this. So, let us say I have give you some values m u upper body is equal to 54 kgs m legs is 26 kgs what is m load when I am given this a equal to 25 centimeters b equal to 35 centimeters and c equal to 20 centimeters. So, toppling when will it begin when the combined center of mass passes through the edge of the foot ok. So, again here it is not correct toppling will begin when this combined center of mass the edge of this foot. This is the this would be the combined C O M. Vertical line through the combined C O M now if I call this distance as D from here to that is the same as So, I have if I take moment. So, let, let us just call it some c just to no that that is c taking if I take moments about that then I get. So, if I take moments about the ankle joint what do I get for this? Let us say oh, okay, before let us first generally say that this passes at some distance d and then develop the condition for you know if d is less than c then you will not top, topple if d is greater than c you are going to topple as. So, to come com uh, to find the distance at which the combined center of mass passes it is essentially. So, m l g into a minus m load g into b should be m combined g into d right. So, if you if I look here about the ankle one creates a counterclockwise one creates a clockwise moment net moment this this will be the effect of that where m combined is mass of the upper body plus mass of the legs plus mass of the load ok. Do not forget the mass of the upper body because here we it does not contribute to the moment because I am assuming it is passing through the ankle, but it would contribute to the total mass. So, if this d is less than c then toppling is avoided. If d is equal to c that is imminent you know that is when 
So, if d greater than c then toppling happens. So, the limit is c and so I can calculate what could be the maximum load that you can carry by using this relationship. So, essentially from here if d equal to c then I can com compute what m load should be or what is the maximum load I can carry to avoid toppling. Okay, that is why is lifting smaller loads it is less risky, but if you are trying to lift a very heavy load then it is likely that you may lose your balance does not happen when you are lifting smaller loads. But again if you reach too far to lift a smaller load then again the upper body if, if it falls outside the base of support that contributes a moment that you could that could cause you to fall. So, your body maintains this you can also find okay, what is the. So, if I want to look at say my back muscles extensors right. So, here in this case what kind of moment do they have to exert for me to maintain this position okay, to prevent me from falling forward. Because if this was there was no muscle control then it is just a matter of it is not just this joint you know I have n other joints about which I could <coughs> fall forward. Okay. So, at every joint there is muscle action that is preventing that is stabilizing that joint and preventing motion about that joint and to maintain this balance. So, that would just be an inverse dynamic analysis you know where the external loads are you can find out at that joint what would be the moment that would have to be applied by the trunk extensors in order to maintain that particular posture. Okay. That would just be a function of the destabilizing moment. D distance is your distance of the combined center of mass. So, these multiple loads are there right I am computing one combined center of mass. Moment of the leg from the axis of the D. Moment of the legs from because that is where the body will pivot, right? This is my ankle. Yeah, that's my ankle joint. I'm computing the moment about that. I am assuming everything else is maintained as one. So that's why I'm saying like there are muscles acting. I am assuming that the ankle is my weak link here that so if you think of this body as just pivoted about the ankle okay, that is it what is the destabilizing moment at the ankle.